Okay, so in the last video I started talking about sp2 hybridization, and in doing so we saw that a double covalent bond is actually composed of two distinct types of orbital overlaps. So one of those orbital overlaps is a direct head-on overlap that we call a sigma bond. So in the case of a molecule such as ethylene, when we have two doubly bonded carbons, the sigma bond uh, is an overlap of two sp2 hybrid orbitals. The other type of bond is actually a sideways overlap of unhybridized p orbitals that we call a pi bond. So for an sp2 hybridized carbon atom, for instance, the s orbital combines with two p orbitals to make three sp2 hybrids, but all, only two of those p orbitals were used up to make those hybrid orbitals, so we still have one unhybridized p orbital left over, and that's this red thing. And that unhybridized p orbital can participate in pi bonding with other unhybridized p orbitals. So this doesn't necessarily have to be a carbon-carbon double bond. Uh, a carbon-oxygen double bond also consists of a sigma bond and a pi bond. Okay, so basically what's going on with, uh, let's say, you know, let's just return back to our example in ethylene. Uh, Basically what's going on is that all six of these atoms, so these two carbons and all four of uh, these hydrogens here, which are represented as blue circles, are all in the same plane. Now they may not appear that they're in the same plane, and I've you know, sort of tried to draw it as if you know, this is uh, nearly perpendicular to the page. Uh, if it were completely perpendicular to the page, then you wouldn't be able to see these orbitals back here. But uh, it's you know, slightly tilted so that you can see it. So all six of those atoms are in the same plane, so this molecule is actually flat. And the pi bond cuts through perpendicular to that plane formed by those six atoms. So we have this pi bond, and then we have uh, these two atoms here that are on one side of the pi bond, and then we have these two atoms back here that are on the other side of the pi bond. And this gives rise to a certain phenomenon that we call cis-trans isomerism. So anytime we have uh, two uh, atoms bonded together that are just sigma bonded together, so if there's no pi bonds at all, no double bonds, then we have what, what's called free rotation around that sigma bond. So in this molecule here, this is just uh, ethane, this is just C2H6, uh, each of these two carbons is sp3 hybridized, there are no uh, double bonds here, and at room temperature, these uh, atoms have more than enough kinetic energy uh, so that the, there can be free rotation around this bond. So there can be uh, an infinite number of what we call conformations around this bond based on uh, how the atoms uh, that are bonded to these carbons are oriented with respect to one another. Now the same is not true for ethylene. Anytime we have a carbon-carbon double bond, uh, there is, or any d uh, double bond for that matter, rotation is restricted around that double bond. And the reason why is because of the sideways overlap of the p orbitals. So the pi bond, in, in order to uh, rotate around this bond, you would have to essentially break the pi bond to do it. And at room temperature, uh, generally the atoms do not have enough kinetic energy to do this. So, uh, as I said, this gives rise to what we call cis-trans isomerism. So, uh, Hopefully this is uh, sort of a review by now, but isomers are uh, compounds that have the same molecular formula. So in other words, they have the same number of each type of atom, but something about the arrangement of their atoms is different. So one class of isomers uh, is what we call cis-trans isomers. So if you consider a molecule such as uh, this one, this is what we call 1,2-dibromoethene. 1,2-dibromoethene is just two carbons that are double, doubly bonded to one another, and each of those two carbons has a hydrogen and a bromine atom attached to it. And because the rotation is restricted around the pi bond, 1,2-dibromoethene uh, can exist as two forms. The cis form, in which the bromine atoms are on the same side of the double bond, or the trans form, in which the bromines, uh, the cis isomer or the trans isomer, in which the uh, bromine atoms are on opposite sides of that double bond. So that pi bond, remember, the, the take home lesson here is that that pi bond is a sideways overlap. You can't rotate around it. And as a result, 
uh, atoms can be on the same side of the pi bond or they can be on opposite sides of the pi bond uh, resulting in cis or trans isomers respectively. So I hope this video was at least a little bit helpful and uh, stay tuned for more.